like to go ha 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 I like to go he 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 We have a lot of fun my mouth and me I like to go I like to go Big City Dining in Springfield Depot Bar and Grill no matter how rich you are, I think we all know that feeling of panic when you realize you've lost something, whether it's a cell phone or an iPad or a purse or a wallet, or in this case, $500 in cash. Our first thought is, I hope the person that found it is honest. That is exactly what happened to a Pleasant View woman who came to Springfield to shop at Kroger. While she was in the store, she somehow managed to lose an envelope with $500 in it. It was $500 she couldn't afford to lose. She thought the money was gone forever. So this story starts with you, I think, doesn't it? I think so. You found the money in a uh, store basket Absolutely. and ran for the door. No, actually, I had to do my shopping for our restaurant. Um, and I got a few groceries. Um, loading them into the car, I picked up an envelope in the bottom of the cart and saw that there was some money in there so I took it with me and all plans of finding the person that lost it I later discovered there was five hundred dollars in the wow. envelope yeah yeah so uh it's exciting isn't it well yeah I mean I was actually more upset for the person that lost it I'm you know it wasn't my money but I wanted to find whoever lost it so well that's about it so sometime within about a 30 minute window you realize that you're missing five hundred dollars yes what was your reaction a little frantic, a little upset. You called the store? I did. They hadn't found anything. And you guys searched for how long? Probably 25, 30 minutes through the parking lot and throughout the whole store. Maybe she dropped it in the parking lot, that kind of thinking. Yeah, thought maybe blown away or just somebody picked it up and threw it maybe in a trash can or something, not knowing what it was. So you had to call her and say, sorry. Yeah, we couldn't find it and they took down her name and number and tried to hold it for us so we could track her down if it did turn up. Customer turned it in later that night. And so you get the call, sorry, there's no money. You probably expected that. Absolutely. I understood that about 30 minutes later when nothing was found. I had to learn to let it go because I knew it probably would never be found. But the money still existed. Absolutely. Actually, I went to Smokey Barnes Lost and Found page, for Lost and Found for Robertson County, and posted on there that I had found something on Monday at Kroger. If you can identify it, you know, contact me. To no avail, no one, no one uh, posted that they lost anything. So then I came to customer service and asked if anyone had reported losing anything. And the lady at customer service went and notified Jeff. And Jeff, you know, knew the situation. And he, luckily for all of us, he was the manager on duty that helped Heather, you know, look for the money. So um, it took a while to finally get back in touch with her. But when we did was, I believe, two weeks later when, when we finally could get the money back to Heather. And we were all glad, of course, you know. I was just glad to do it, you know. I'm, I'm curious, what everybody that goes shopping, there's always an envelope in the grocery bags. There's some kind of literature or uh, brochures or stuff. What made you look inside that envelope? You know, I truthfully don't know. I really don't. I usually try to avoid carts, you know, with papers and things in them, but something just told me to take that cart, and I did. I mean, really, in a strange way, maybe I was meant to find it and hold on to it for her. You know, Heather's a fantastic person. I was just happy to get the money back to her. You didn't even know you had the money until all the way to checkout. So yeah, you, absolutely. you walked around for a half hour with her money in your cart, didn't even know it. Totally. Absolutely. I actually even forgot that it was in there until I started to unload my groceries, and, and there it was. So I'm just glad it all worked out for her in the end. So what was it like getting a phone call that your money was going to be returned to you? Overwhelming. That was the first thought was, oh, my gosh, really? I... I I'm having a difficult time believing this. This is, this is really overwhelming. It's like winning your own money. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, because I had let it go. So it was, um, it was really good to finally meet Gail. The, I, I call her my angel of mercy. <laughs> so, and, and the e sequence of events that Jeff was able to remember my name even though my number wasn't there anymore, 
and the person that actually talked to the person that actually called me to get me to Gale was really wonderful. There was actually a process. Once you realized the money had been found, you had to try to retrace your steps and find her again. How did that happen? Yeah, uh, what we did was when we found out her name, we had uh, our um, accounting departments look up her Kirker Plus card number and then was able to get an address so we knew what city that she lived in and to ask the people that I knew that lived in that town if they knew her. And one Saturday afternoon, we happened to run across a customer. It was a uh, cousin of an associate of ours that was helping me, and she asked him, and he's like, that name sounds familiar. Let me find out. And he walked to the car, talked to his wife, came right back in the store and said, yeah, I know her. Been to her house. And he's like, our friends, or our kids are friends, and was able to call her in about 30 minutes. He had her phone number and his, his cell phone and tracked her down, so I thought, called her that Saturday night. And I know they met up just a couple of days later. So. Wow, that money was meant to be yours. Amen. You must be very appreciative to both of them. I am, very much so. This kind of stuff doesn't happen too often. I think most of us can see that if we lose something, whether it's a cell phone or a wallet or money, whatever, it's just going to be gone forever. To, And I'm certain that's obviously what you thought, especially since it was gone for two weeks. No one's ever going to believe anything is going to be returned after two weeks. It's already somebody's on the beach in Tahiti, and that's just the end of it. But that, that didn't happen for you. Especially not $500 that there's no identifiers in the envelope or anything. So I'm very thankful that Jeff remembered my name and that, that Gail is an honest soul. So what's your message to Gail? Thank you and keep on doing good oh, work. absolutely. <laughs> I feel like I've gained a friend in all of this. So it's a win-win for both of us. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess you'll probably never uh, shop at Kroger again. Huh? No, I, I, I love Kroger's, especially now. Anything you'd like to add? Um, it's just, it was nice to be able to help people out and to get the money back to somebody that truly needed it and that somebody was still willing to, in this day and age, to, to find something and do the right thing. It's, it's nice to see that some of the stores I've worked in and other communities, that just doesn't happen. But to be part of this community and get to know that that happens more than just this one time. I get to see that stuff quite a bit, and it's, it's good to see that that still exists in this world. I think this speaks for the character of the staff here. Yes, I think it does too. I got the, the privilege to work with a lot of associates that helped me through this, that tracked down and did a lot of things that won't ever get to know about, that tried to track this young lady down and do the right thing and get it back to her. Well, there you have it, Robertson County. Oh, and by the way, uh, Heather is the one who reached out to us about this story. After the money was returned to her, she wanted the whole world to know about her two honest friends, Jeff and Gail. This has been Jim Paul reporting for Smoky Barn News in Springfield. Get away for lunch in the quaint atmosphere of Burdett's Tea Shop. Nestled in the middle of historic downtown Springfield, enjoy signature sandwiches and freshly made soups and delectable desserts. And then shop an array of gift selections like serving pieces, aprons, books, jewelry, and wonderful seasonal whimsies. We're easy to find in Springfield on the corner of 7th Avenue and Main Street. We're open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 2.30. For more information, see a link to our Facebook page below this video.